Hello, my name is Matthew Hallberg and I'm a product manager over at Serial Tech. Uh, this is section two of our SAS SATA bus expert training. In this section we'll cover triggering. Um, we'll explore creating a trigger. Topics include trigger creation, global counters, and live counters. So in creating a trigger, triggers allow users to locate slash identify an event of interest. Serial Tech's powerful triggering logic allows users to be very specific about a set of events. Triggering can be up to four sequencers running simultaneously, and each sequencer supports up to 16 states, four timers, and four counters. Um, please also note that sequencers are independent and cannot be used with another. Trigger events can be created manually or copied from a trace, and triggers can be saved for local use or for sharing. So let me just cut down on the jargon a little bit about creating a trigger. Uh, you can use the analyzer to create a very complicated set of triggers. So look for event A, followed by event B, followed by event C, and event D, or go back to A. Uh, essentially just a very complicated logical loop, or as simple as just look for an event and trigger. Let me jump into the software so you can see that. So under triggering, let me just uh, kill this here, there's a couple different things that we can do when creating a trigger. You'll see this list over here on this side that lists all the different kinds of events that we can use to trigger on. So let's say for serial ATA, we're first going to look for a signature FIS. So I'm going to start typing in register, and you'll see as I do that, it shortens the list here. And I can click and copy this over. Here's a registered device to host generally a sig I call it a signature FIS. So let's say after seeing this signature FIS we want to look for a new event and that new event will be an identify device. Okay. So after seeing this register device to host I want to go to a new state so here's an if, a then, and then if we see this identify device command I want to trigger the analyzer. Otherwise, let's put an else if we don't see this identify device. Else if, let's say we see a read command, a read DMA. Okay. Otherwise, if we see a read DMA command, we want to go back to state one. So let's just kind of count this off on, on what this is doing. First we look for a registered device to host. Once we see it, we go to state 2. If we see an identified device, then we trigger. Else, if we see a read DMA, we'll go back to state 1. Let's just do a quick trace and see how that looks. I'm going to go ahead and... Um, first I'm going to use the analyzer to power up the drive I have attached. Actually, no, let me start the capture first. And then we'll power up the drive. Okay. In the status screen you'll see that the analyzer triggered on the event and that we made it to state 2 in the sequencer. So let's go ahead and uh, just take a look in the trace at what a trigger event looks like. You'll see that the trigger event is marked by this um, bullseye. Okay. So that's that. Next we're going to look at creating, you know, using counters and the difference between an event counter and a live counter. So there are two kinds of trigger counters, number of events that have occurred and global counters. The number of event counters will count up to or randomly up to X number of events. Global counters are used when running a loop, like from I to 5 end. So let's say look for read DMA five times um, and then trigger the analyzer. So let's show you in the software. So the first area is here, wait for X amount of these events. I can wait for one of these events, or I can wait for 10. Or, uh, 
Um, yeah, so I can wait for 10 of these events. Okay. Uh, global counters are a little bit different. So after I see this identified device, instead of triggering, I'm going to increment the counter. And you'll see now that this little guy up here came up and said global counter one threshold. So now, after I see this identify device, I'm going to increment the counter and then go back up to state one. Okay. State one, now I'm, I'm going to look for if the counter has expired or if the counter has reached the value it's supposed to reach. So here's global counter. So now, if I see register device to host, um, it'll go to state two. Otherwise, if my global counter has been met, and let's say I have this set to five, um, it'll trigger the analyzer. So look for this event. Go down here, look for an identified device. Okay, we saw one. The counter is incremented. And then we want to go back to state one. Then we go here. We wait for another register device to host to occur. We go down here. We see the identify device. We increment the counter. And it goes like this in a loop until we have seen five of these events. On the fifth event, when we do this comparison, if register device to host or if counter, the counter has been met, so the analyzer will actually trigger. Next, there's also other counters that I like to call live counters, which you can use the action count and count per second for metrics during the trace. The thing to note about live counters is that they do not cause a trigger event, and they're very useful in seeing if certain events occur during a trace without having to stop the trace to verify a presence. You can also do a count per second on frames in each direction for IOPS. So let's just start anew. Let's say that I wanted to do an IOPS measurement. In IOPS, I'm just going to look for any SATA frame coming from, let's say, the target. And instead of triggering, I'm going to count per second. Okay. So let's set up another one that is read commands. And we'll do a read first party DMA queued. So we'll set up a new sequencer, and we'll put a count, okay. and we'll set a read DMA extended, and we'll do a count here as well, and then we'll press start capture. Now I'll go in and just do a quick read to the drive. So maybe I copy this and I'll place it on my desktop. Okay. In the software, I'll see how many commands are occurring and what my frames per second are. You also see from time to time, well, you would have seen some blips. I guess the file stopped uh, copying over. But we had a thousand. Uh, 1,210 read first party DMA queues. We had zero read DMA extendants, and we had um, an average frames per second at around 467. Okay. So those are live counters. That concludes this section on creating triggers and using counters and live counters.